Welcome friends, Lost Garf here, and it's time for this complete guide to fighting Stormclaw. Stormclaw is in a really annoying behemoth to fight. A lot of people hate fighting it. It's just a hump to get over some, for some people. And some people just don't like playing the game anymore because of it. So here's a guide to help fighting the Stormclaw. The goal here is to give you all the fundamental information you need so that you have an easy time fighting the Stormclaw, you can fight with every weapon because you're going to know all the information about Stormclaw. You're going to know all the attacks, the attack patterns, their attack range, the tells to their attacks. So the beast is more predictable for you so you can deal with it with each weapon. Some weapons are better against it than others, so I'm going to go over the tier list of the weapons, how to fight it with every weapon, how to fight it as a team, what loadout you should have against this behemoth when you're first fighting it, because later armor is obviously going to be better, but what armor should you have when you first encountered the Stormclaw, and a lot of other helpful information with tips and tells and so on and so forth. There will be time codes in the description if you want specific information, so let's get going. Stormclaw's info and attack range and patterns. So Stormclaw is a shock type behemoth that is similar to Embermane. They have a lot of attacks that make them very annoying to deal with, as well as hit and run tactics just like Embermane. But like Embermane, it is vulnerable to getting interrupted during its swipe attack. This is going to be very important to keep in mind. Stormclaw is one of the most annoying behemoths in the game, and devs are actually planning on nerfing them in the near future, so keep that in mind with this guide for the currently harder version of Stormclaw. So if you can beat it now, you'll be able to beat it even easier when it gets nerfed later. Stormclaw has an enrage form, but is extremely rare. I've only seen it once in 30 hunts, so keep that in mind. Enrage makes it faster, but it is a very short enrage, just like Embermane. One more thing is, Stormclaw makes lightning fences in the first area, and will rarely do them again in later areas. If you're unfamiliar with Shock, it makes it so that you can't use items or interact with plants or the Aether Vent for the duration. Now when it comes to Stormclaw's attacks, these are what they are. It has a swipe where it runs up and tries to swipe at you. It has a lunge where it tries to jump forward at you. The headbutt is where it swings its head from one side to the other. It moves its entire body, so the front half can actually hurt you, so be careful of that. Tail Whip is where it does 180 degree Tail Whip. Pounce! It leaps into the air and slams its front legs on the ground, doing an AoE explosion where it lands. Then there's Lightning Ball, where it launches a ball of lightning at you and your teammates. It can be knocked back at it for damage. Lightning Swipe is where it turns into electricity for a quick swipe. Then there's Lightning Cloud, where it puts a cloud over you and your teammates' heads, but it actually only goes for one person. It's going to do it three times. So you have to do a lot of rolling or dodging of some kind, or deal with it in other ways. Then there's the Lightning Fence, where it creates five fence posts one at a time, and these posts connect to each other with lightning that you cannot walk through. It can do minor damage as well. After it builds the fifth post, it will turn to do a swipe at you or a teammate if you're in a team fight. And it can end early if it runs out of space. Like if it gets into like a weird corner, it'll stop doing the posts early and it'll just go back to a different kind of, kind of attack setup. You can also damage the posts and break them. Now when it comes to the attack range of the Stormclaw, first thing to keep in mind is that any of these attacks can happen any time as the Lightning Ball, Lightning Cloud, Lightning Fence, and Lightning Swipe. No matter where you are, near or far, it will do these moves when it wants to. But when you're far away, it could also just run over to you to go for the Swipe, the Lunge, or the Lightning Swipe as well. Now when you're in front of it, if you're directly in its face, it will go for the Lunge, the Headbutt, or the Pounce. If you're to the side of it, it will go for the Headbutt or the Tail Whip. And if you're behind it, it's going to go for the Tail Whip or just run away to do something else. Or any of the other moves under any time. Now, because of the anytime attacks, there is some unpredictability about the Stormclaw, but for the most part, you'll see those coming with the Tells, so it's not too much of a problem. But here's the most predictable things I can tell you about the Stormclaw, and that is, the first attack in each area is always a swipe. So that means you can interrupt at the start of every fight. The Lightning Fence occurs often in the first area, but it can happen in the second and beyond. Usually, people will tell you that it never happens anywhere else, but I've fought it so many times, I've seen it do in the second area, but it's very rare. Now the thing to keep in mind when it comes to the fence is when you see it coming, prepare because after the fifth fence post is made, it will always go for a swipe right after. So that's another interruption point. Now when it comes to lightning balls, when it runs away to do them, usually it'll do two, sometimes it'll do one or three balls, but most of the time you're going to see two lightning balls. And that's good to keep in mind because what comes after that, and that is, it will always do these two, three things. That is, it will either run at you or walk over to you. If it's running at you, it's going to do the swipe, so that's another interruption chance right there. But if it walks over to you, there's only two attacks it can do from that point. It will either lunge at you forward, or it will hop to the side and then go for a lightning swipe at you from a different angle. That's usually what will happen, so you have ways of predicting what's going to come up based on how it's moving towards you. And the last thing to keep in mind is, it will often tail up or headbutt if you attack from the side. So what that means is, if you 
get in a good enough loop, you can hit it while it's doing the toe up and the, the headbutt over and over and over again. I've had a point where I've fought it where it's just doing those two things alternating for about eight or nine attacks before it goes for one of the more unpredictable attacks, which allows you to do a crap ton of damage if you're able to roll through and get a bunch of hits in. Tips and tells against Stormclaw. The so first the tips, first one I gotta tell you is get the Scarn Lantern. That's gotta be in your loadout because the Lantern Shield is very good at mitigating the Lightning Cloud's damage. It also regenerates around the same time Stormclaw is gonna cast it again. There's like a cooldown on how often it can do Lightning Cloud. And it's about the distance of the time when you can use the Scar and Lantern Shield again. And it mitigates nearly all the damage if you do it right. So when it comes to timing it, because the Lantern Shield only lasts so long, you should do Lantern Shield right when you start seeing the Lightning Bolt start to flash, and it should last the duration of the attack. When it comes to the fence posts, always break the second and fourth post because they're connected to two other posts. Breaks it the fastest, you can break it in two that way. The other ways would require more than that. Something to keep in mind is, you can build meter charge off fence posts, so don't forget that. Another tip to remember is, as mentioned before, if there's no space to make more posts, the Stormclaw will stop doing that and do something else. You can jump over the fence with a hammer rocket jump, by the way. Now the lightning bowls, you can knock them back to do damage to Stormclaw, you can also hit the post with them, so that's something to remember as well. Stormclaw often does two lightning balls, so once you see one, you will likely have time to run over to the Aether Vent to heal, so remember that. Something else, mentioning it, Hammer, Pike, and Axe can interrupt a swipe. Very useful when using those weapons. Focus on attacking on the back half of the Stormclaw headbutt and tail whip can be easily rolled through and it will do it on repeat, which makes it a lot more vulnerable to attack. Another tip is the time between headbutt and tail whip is enough to do two attacks with most weapons, level one or two charge on Axe. For the Hammer, it's about one Aether charge and then one follow-up attack. And then when Pounce happens, it leaves the most vulnerable to attacks. So after Pounce, it takes a moment to just stand there, but gives you enough time to do like a level 3 charge on axe and just longer combos with everything else. Now when it comes to the tells, if it's running, it's coming to swipe. It's always a run for the swipe. If it's turning to face you at close range, it's looking to do the lunge at you, so watch out for that. Now when it comes to headbutt, it looks in one direction with its head raised, then it swings its whole body and head in the opposite direction. When it comes to the tail whip, it is going to be covering itself in electricity and twisting its body to get ready to just whip its tail in the direction it's looking. It gets on its hind legs before pounce, plenty of time to notice and dodge that one. It will run away to fire lightning balls. It will do a short hop before going for the lightning swipe. So you'll see it do a little hop to the side out of direction towards you and then turn to hit you with the lightning swipe. So watch out for that. Lightning cloud always fires two bolts before striking to keep, so keep that in mind for dodging. After lightning ball, if Stormclaw is running, it is going for the swipe. If Stormclaw is walking, it's going for the lunge or lightning swipe. With all these tells, you should know what's coming for the most part and be able to deal with any situation coming your way. Except, of course, when you have Lightning Cloud over your head, then you gotta worry about that and whatever it's attacking with. Now, when it comes to loadout, you should be using Hellion Armor and weapons. It's your strongest choice at this point in the game. The Fortress stat from the Hellion Armor will also help just mitigate more damage from the Stormclaw. Very helpful. If you're having a hard time farming Hellion, refer to our complete guide to fighting Hellion. It'll make farming a lot easier for you. The weapons for this guide and the armor are mostly upgraded to full, making an easy time to fight them. You really should just fight them right away with the Hellion stuff. Get them upgraded a little bit makes life a lot easier, especially when you're first fighting Stormclaw. The Lantern should be the Scarn Lantern. That is the only choice because of the Lightning Cloud. That dodging that is very annoying and the damage is mostly mitigated by your shield, so definitely get that for that. When it comes to Tonics, Stamina and Bulwark, as always for survivability, the third is up to you. Of course, Assault for Stagger, Blitz for more attacking, and Frenzy for more damage. Now when it comes to the weapons, here's the tier list. Sword, Hammer, Pike, and Axe are all tied, except Sword's number one, and then Chain Blades is last. Why? Well, the sword is the most effective as you can easily dodge through all attacks and beat it with Stormclaw. It's actually possible to take zero damage with the sword against a Stormclaw. It is nuts. You can't interrupt, but you don't need to. That's what's crazy about it. For Hammer, Pike, and Axe, all of them have the ability to interrupt Stormclaw, but each have different shortcomings that put them under Sword. When it comes to Chain Blades, it's just a very bad day. Your dash makes it hard to dodge through things. Lightning Cloud is even harder to dodge with this dash. You can't interrupt, and it's just... You're not as effective as Roll. You really aren't. If you could Roll with Chain Blade instead of Dash, it'd be just as good as Sword, for sure. Now when you're fighting Stormclaw with a sword, the first thing you want to do is you want to roll through that swipe at the start and then go ahead and attack it and just keep beating it up. At close range, pay attention to tells and roll through and attack. Don't ever overcommit the combos. The first two steps of your combos should be all you do before you have to roll through another attack. 
unless it's pounce, then you can attack a while longer. After fence post, roll through that swipe and keep attacking. Break the fence post when Stormcloud runs away to throw lightning balls. Hit back the lightning balls if you have nothing else to do, then when Stormcloud comes close after lightning balls, just roll through and attack. Keep this up and it will die pretty quickly. It's just that easy, just keep dodging through attacks and hitting. All you do is dodge and hit, dodge and hit, dodge and hit, and the Stormcloud is just going to go down, really frustrated at the fact it couldn't hit you at all. But remember to save the Lantern Shield for Lightning Cloud. You can roll through the Lightning as well, but Lantern Shield is good insurance. Now when it comes to the hammer, when it goes for the swipe at the start of the fight, do the evasive blast, the interrupt Stormclaw, and then you're going to go ahead and punish it. Beat it up, get the stagger on it, and then knock it out some more, and then just keep beating on it. And just focus on that. When it does the fence post swipe, do the same thing, interrupt it there as well. But here's the problem. Usually when you knock it over like that, it's going to fall past the fence. So you have to run over and break the fence. Luckily, you only need one Aether Charged attack to break the fence. That helps out right there. Roll through attacks and hit the Stormclaw in the back legs whenever you can. You can usually get one or two Aether Charged attacks at that point. When it does pounce, you can hit the most on it right there. Don't try to force the stagger though. Always go for the interrupt first, then do some hits in the face. But one thing to keep in mind is if you're close enough to the Stormclaw when it does Lightning Balls, you can run over and do Rocket Jumps to its face to get more stagger damage in there. You can knock back the Lightning Balls with the hammer, but it just is not easy to do. You can also Rocket Jump over fences, which is very helpful. And remember to save, of course, the Stjarn Shield for the Lightning Cloud. As with every other one of them, just hold on to that shield for the cloud so you don't have to get beat up too much by that. Now when it comes to the pike, at the start of the fight you won't have any bullets, so you can't interrupt at the start. So roll through the attack, turn around and hit the Stormcloud to build up a bullet. You're going to want to have this bullet because soon it's going to go for the fence post swipe. You can do a little fence post then turn around to attack at the swipe, hit it with the bullet from that, and bam it gets knocked over. Here's the problem though, just like the hammer, it goes over the fence usually, which means you got to break the fence post to get over to beat it up. But once you're able to go beat it up a little bit, you'll get a bullet built up for later. Now, of course, there's the Lightning Ball swipe as well, so after Lightning Balls, I go for a swipe there. Interrupted at that point, there's nothing to stop from beating it up. Build up even bigger bullets, and then there you go. Once you're built up to getting three bullets, you can shoot it whenever it goes far away, and also knock the Lightning Balls back at it as well, just giving you a lot of damage over time against the Stormclaw. But always save at least one bullet so you can shoot it when it goes for another swipe. But also, when it comes to when you're doing the close range fighting, when it's doing the headbutt, and it's doing the tail whip, you can usually do about step two of the harvest combo before you got to do another roll to dodge. And when it does pounce, you can do even more combo. So remember that. And as always, Scar and Shield. Save that for the lightning cloud. Now when it comes to the axe, the horizontal swing is the best way to interrupt the storm claw. It's just the safest way to do it. When it runs at you at the start, hit it with that. Bam, it gets knocked over. Run over and then beat it up. Try to get some staggers there. Get some charges on your axe. That's going to be really good punishment. Just like the others though, when it goes with a fence post swipe, you're going to knock it over the fence, which is not so great. Luckily, you can break the fence post pretty well. You're going to need a level 3 charge on that. Good news is whenever you're hitting the fence post, you're building up meter for your axe, which is even better. But well, something to keep in mind is when you go for the staggers, don't force it. Go for the staggers after interrupts. Do not try to just hit in the face because if you do, you're going to get hit with lunges and that's going to be really annoying to deal with. Focus on the back, roll through attacks, you can usually get a level 2 charge after going through the tail weapon headbutt. After pounce you can get a level 3 for dang sure. That tail comes off really quick from these attacks as well. Now here's something very, very interesting. A charged attack on a lightning ball will stun the Stormclaw. You'll hit it back at it really hard and fast, and it will stun the Stormclaw in that it'll get knocked back for a moment and then it's going to roar in anger which leaves it open for more attacks. So in team play, your teammates should be rushing over towards it while you knock that ball back, and while it's busy doing all that, your teammates can beat the crap out of it. In solo, this just gives you more time to wear off the shock or go get heals. And again, remember to scar and lantern shield. Use that for the lightning clouds. Chain blades against the Stormclaw. This is hard mode right here. You have a dash, not a roll, so it's a hard time getting around attacks. You'll be using a lot of stamina to dash in and out of Stormclaw attacks, so keep that in mind. You got tonics for that, luckily. Or you're going to have to use cells for that as well. Focus on dodging the swipes, trying to punish Stormclaw afterwards. Dodge the headbutt, punish. Dodge the tail whip, punish it. You can hit back lightning balls from a distance, luckily, with your chain blades if you need to do that. You can break fence posts pretty well, and you're going to want to because you need the space to dash around. Backflip also helps you get out of bad situations, but it only goes so far. You want to focus on the back legs and dodging around attacks. Don't overcommit the combos and just keep moving around. It's going to be a very long slog of a fight, but it is winnable. You can dash out of the lightning cloud attacks just like you can roll through them, but it's not as easy to do as roll. 
So always have that Scar Lantern Shield ready. You want to make sure you do. And maybe you'll not have a hard time with it. Chain Blades are my favorite weapon, but it's a hard time fighting the Storm Cloud with them. That's for dang sure. Now when it comes to team play, let the Hammer of the Axe approach first. That way when it goes after them, they'll get the interrupt and then you just gang up on it and beat it as a team. That's what you should be doing. Now when it does the fence post though, everyone group up, try to figure out where it's going to come from at the fifth post, and have your teammates set up in a line that allows your hammer and axe or pike to hit it instead of the sword or the chain blades. That we get another interrupt, break that post down very quickly, go over there, and punish it some more. Now something of course to remember is the axe, when charged, can slam back a lightning ball into the storm cloud, leaving it open for more attacks. So have faith. When it starts showing the lightning balls at you and your teammates, go past the lightning balls, let your teammate hit that thing right back at the storm cloud, it interrupts it, and everyone just gets to punish the crap out of it. It's beautiful. At close range, of course, focus on the back legs. Everyone just focus on that roll through or dash around and just keep beating it up as it's turning around doing the headbutt and the tail whip. Should make things fairly easy. When you have a good enough team with all the things you're doing, with the interrupts, with the lightning ball slam backs, and just dodging and striking, it dies very fast. When a team knows what it's doing, it dies quick. A team that doesn't know what it's doing gets destroyed horribly, but a team that does takes it out ridiculously quickly. One thing to remember is the lightning cloud only hits one person, not the whole team, so figure out who the cloud is on and then react accordingly. In conclusion, Stormclaw is going to test your patience with its many attacks, but if you take them one step at a time, you can beat Stormclaw down very well. This guide's important to me to make because I know Stormclaw is really frustrating a lot of people, and I hope a lot of people get help from it. If you know someone who's having trouble with the Stormclaw, give them this guide. Hopefully it helps them out, and hopefully you can help them out if you do team play with them. Just, if you need to clear it, you only want to beat it out for the quest, and that's it. Sword. Sword for dang sure. Out of the interrupts, I would suggest Pike over the others. It's just the easiest one to confirm, I feel. In team play, though, you definitely want to have an axe for the lightning ball slam back. For dang sure with that. Pike's also helpful with that because they can do it at range. Not, not the slam back, but the interrupt. And Chain Blades is good in team play. In solo, no. In team play, Chain Blades can do so much damage to the parts and break them off very quickly and easily. You definitely want to have one on your team. But only in team play. Not in solo. Just repeating that, not in solo, which is not good. So there you go, that right there is the guide for Stormclaw. I hope it helps a lot of people out because this is a fun game and I want people to have fun playing it. Now the next guide might not be Karabakh. I don't know if it'll be the Maelstrom Beast either because they, they change out every couple weeks. So it might be Shroud and Rezakiri, which are the endgame beast pretty much and they take a lot of farming to get ready for. That's going to be interesting guys, but they might not come out very quickly. So we may see other guys before we see the end games, but I'm not sure who it'll be about. That's something to consider. But for now, that right there is the guy. I had fun making it. Hope you have fun watching and listening. And that's what it's about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by, and good luck with your hunt.